Well, hey there, it's Connie Fife, your unstoppable diva, and welcome to the Connie Fife Show. We are a business radio show with an edge, and I mean, it's unscripted, it's unedited, you just never know what you're going to hear on our show, but it's all good because we want to help you and provide you tools, tips, so you can excel in your entrepreneurial business because let's face it, there's ups, there's downs, there's peaks, there's valleys. And sometimes, again, as an entrepreneur, you, you, you're across the board, you're a multitasker, you want to get it all done and you need to stay motivated while you do it. And we're providing you with the tips to do that. So I don't want to get into much of that right now because we have a phenomenal guest for today. So I just want to jump right, right into it. Now he is someone, I mean, he's, um, he's, he was just an ordinary person, but he found himself in a very extraordinary situation. He was a top sales producer, and I bet he still is, in every company that he has worked. But on January 15th in 2009, and I can't believe it's that long ago already, but in 2009, you heard this in the news while traveling on a business trip that he had made hundreds of times before, like all of us when we travel, especially, you know, as speakers or authors or those road warriors, you know, we get very routine and we take things for granted. But then something happens, something that really nudges, nudges us, something that really kicks us in the rear end and changes that daily routine and changes everything in our life. So you've probably guessed it by now who we have on our show. I just want to welcome right now to the Connie Five Show, Dave Sanderson. Hey, Dave, how are you? Connie, thank you for having me on, Dave. Thank you very much. So the miracle on the Hudson. Again, I, can't, again, I can't believe 2009, it's been that long already? Almost 10 years. It'll be 10 years yeah. this January, correct? Wow, wow. I mean, and, I, and I'm sure you get asked this question all the time, but I mean, what was it? What were you thinking at that moment of impact? Yeah, there were really a couple moments. The first is when you hear those words that the, uh, the crew says, you know, this is your captain brace for impact. That's when the first thing is like, uh-oh, this is yeah. probably not going to turn out good. But when you're going through impact, and I, I really tell people it's that moment before impact. Because when, you, when you're crossing over the George Washington Bridge, you're mm -hmm. going straight towards Manhattan, straight towards the river. It's like you have no control. And one thing you realize is you don't have any control. Mm. You know, the only thing you control is your mind. Right. But when I, the first time I was asked that question, it was probably six or seven years ago. I, when it was telling me, I was like, let me tell you what happens. It's the movie of your life passes before your eyes. When you think you're going to yeah. die, you have less than a minute left. Right. And all of a sudden, you sort of put your head down, right? It's, it, you know it's coming. Right. And you just don't know how it's going to happen. So you see things in your life, the past that you've done, whether it's low league baseball or your first date or you go into a date, whatever it was, my kids getting, you see clarity. And that's what I tell people. And I, I tell people that, and I start to give them a contrast. I'm like, I had a friend who went through the earthquake in Haiti. And she survived six hours in the earthquake underneath rubble in the earthquake in Haiti. Wow. And she came back and she and I were just sh sharing stories. And right. she said the same thing. She said, when I thought I was going to die, like I saw things with clarity. My, I saw my mission. That's exactly what happened to me. I saw clarity. So and when you, and all of a sudden you hit, you make that impact and like, okay, this is it. Right. Right. And all of a sudden you come back up and it's like, well, I made it. But now water's coming in the plane so quickly. It's like, I might die because I might drown. Right. So now it's like part two, right? It's like, okay, you got part one, you, you made it. Part two is even more dangerous because water's coming in so rapidly. Right. And I was in seat 15A, Connie, which is four rows behind the left wing. So I was towards the back of the plane. And so, yeah, you're, you're pretty much back there. And, and the plane and is angled like this. Like just get off a plane normally. Right. right. Now when you got and, it filling up with water. And the planes are 40, roughly 45 plus degrees because it's sticking okay. out of the water. So the backside of the plane's in the water. Mm -hmm. So we're, you look out the window, is the three quarters filled with water already up the window. So now you got that issue to deal with. So right. I, I tell people, if there were a lot of moments, and that's why I called my, my book Moments Matter, a lot of moments that all of a sudden add up that, Kaylee, I shouldn't be here today, but for some reason, I, we all made it. Mm 
right. uh, whether it's the awesome. grace of God or the strategies. And I tell people that I say, this is a perfect business case because you can look at the business aspects of this, take, yeah. take the emotional stuff out right. of teamwork, leadership, right? How to communicate effectively at times of crisis. Right. So right. It's a great business right. case too. Yeah. I mean, I know my business went through that this past year and it was like, okay, let's not panic. You know, what do we need to do? What do we need to turn around? What do we need to do to get move forward? Just like with that crash, I'm sure there were some people that were froze and were, I can't do anything. This is it. I'm done. I'm doomed. I'm dying. And they just froze and stood there. And that is easily easy. I mean, it's human nature to do that, especially in business. So where did you find that strength yourself and those passengers around you to, you know, pick yourselves up and get out those doors? Well, for me, you know, my, I had a game plan when I, you know, when I was going down, my game plan was just get to the aisle, get up and get out as quickly as I could. That was all I could think about. When I got yeah. to the aisle though, Connie, this is what changed for me. So when I got to the aisle, I was making my way out, but okay. then I heard my mother in my head and she had passed away in 1997 okay. and there was something she would tell me when I was a child and all of a sudden I heard her tell me it's like if you do the right if you do the right thing right. God will take care of you right and I tell people after I thought about that after all this happened I said one of the great things about my mother which I I'm learn I now I've learned but I wish I had known before right. is that she always said if she would never make she would make us make our own decisions okay. and live to the consequences and I say, I don't, as a parent, and I know about you, but I know as a parent, I wish I had done that for my kids more, make them make choices. So I didn't make them all the time. So they have to live with consequences. So right. when I heard that, I climbed towards the back of the plane and got behind everybody. And my game plan was to see if anybody needed help. And when okay. everybody was moving, I just started moving like everybody else. And the first light that I saw was on the right and the door was 10 F. So okay. I just get out and just get out. And all of a sudden you look up and there's no room on the wing or the boat. So that's why I was inside the plane for seven minutes, waist deep in 36 degree water. Mm. But then they were yelling to hold on, hold on. And I found out the later reason why is because the little lifeboat was floating out into the river because of the current, because the current was extremely fast in the Hudson River. Folks, yeah. if you're listening yeah. in New York, they, New Jersey, they appreciate it. But if you're not from the East Coast, you probably don't understand. That river is really fast. Yeah, I've been so, on that river. Yeah, yeah. Move. so I was on the lifeboat, waist deep in 36 degree water uh, for about seven minutes. And. Um, and couldn't get out because there's no room until I felt the plane shift. And what happened, I found out later, is a tugboat who came in for the rescue right. backed out and, and touched the front of the plane and shook the plane. And that's where I felt water go up my back. And the first thing I thought about was Titanic. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this thing's yeah. going down, man. It's going down. Yeah. And as if you remember Titanic, when it went down, it sucked everything down inside it. Right. And that's why I jumped in and swam to the closest boat that I could find and it happened to be the end of that, that wing. Okay. Um, and that's how I got off. But now I got to get on the ferry. And finally, someone, two guys just grabbed my arms and pulled me on because I couldn't, I, I said, wow. I can't. And all of a sudden, the word my mom hated most of life was the word can. So they, uh, all of a sudden, someone grabbed me and threw me on. And I thought I made it. I said, Connie, that's the moment I said, you know, I made it. But that's the moment I, I didn't make it because that's the moment. And I give the example of like, especially firemen. And I love speaking to firemen and military and police because mm -hmm. These guys get it. Gals and guys get it. Right. You see them rushing into the battle, right? They're going right. in. But the next thing you see of them, they're sitting on the curb with all their equipment on their back, and they have nothing left because they all their adrenaline's out gone. Right. The adrenaline is gone. Mm -hmm. I had nothing left. I was so cold. I can't tell people I can't explain how cold 36-degree water is for an extended amount of time. And that's, that's the moment I really thought that I wasn't going to make it. I was going to die now because I, I, can, I can barely breathe. Because the adrenaline was gone, and now that cold was just hitting your body, right. and oh, I could, I, it's 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 re, it's it's so hard um, to to even think about that. But let's use that in terms of a business. So yep. you know, a business goes down, a business crashes. You know, they they come back up from that. So how do they take that? How do they grow from that traumatic yep. experience? to so, even cultivate their personal leadership skills? Oh, that's a great question because that's why I did my TED Talk. When I, <clears throat> I wanted to do a TED Talk, but Canley, you know, 
my have I have a compelling story, but that's not enough. If you've, you've probably done a TED talk, anybody's done a TED talk, no, you gotta have that angle, right? Right. Well, my angle was post traumatic growth syndrome. How do you grow from challenging life experiences? Mm-hmm. And I had I used and I used that framework, and it's called PTGS, post traumatic growth syndrome. Okay. And 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 I you only got eighteen minutes, so I've expanded it. And one of the things I talk about to answer your question directly is is one of the things I learned by being the career director for Tony Robbins for you know, ten years. And when he teaches everybody, it's just not something he just taught me. He teaches everybody. But the meaning you attach to something produces the emotion of your life. Mm-hmm. Your life, all your life is, is filled with emotion. So when you're going down in a business crash, whether it's a plane crash, a business, whatever crash it is, you attach a meaning to it. Yeah. Right? And one of the things you learn is, is you can change a meaning to anything. You know, and I'll give you an example. I was in the green room. I was either Good Morning America or the early show. With, with a bunch of the passengers and I was talking to one of them and he saw this as, as a tragedy. He saw this, I mean, okay. he went through a plane crash, he lost his wife and he's going to lose his job. So his life was crashing into him. Right. See what I, my, my perception is this was a blessing. This yeah. opened up so many avenues and all of a sudden I realized the meaning I attached to the same thing that he attached is totally different. Right. So, so by reframing the meaning to answer your question, if you're going down in a business crash, you got to reframe it. What's the opportunity I can get out of this? Because right. through every depression comes, you know, it's a cycle of life, right? You right. go from winter, spring, you know, summer, fall. Right. And you're in a winter. You know spring's coming. You just got to hang in there. Right. right? Mm-hmm. I love that analogy and how, and how you put that because it is, it is so true. And it's really that mind shift to create, look at that and say, oh, you know, again, um, you know, and for me in business and I mean, a couple of years into the business, I lost my voice. I couldn't speak. I was on the speaking circuit speaking 100, 150 times a year. I mean, I was hustling it. Then I lose my voice and then I get sick and I was literally knocked down for almost two years. I had nine surgeries in two years. Now, most people never expected me to come back. They just figured I, I was done or I was going to just, you know, roll out into the sunset, I guess. I don't know. But Game they over. never expected me to come, yeah, to, yeah. to come back. But I never looked at it that way. I looked at it as a gift because, all right, I, it, it was telling me I had to slow down. My body wasn't able to keep up with the moment, momentum at the, and the pace that I was working at. So that was a gift to me to say, okay, what do I really excel at? And when I realized what that was, that's how I reframed my business and continued growing from there. And that's where my success has come from. Even when I lost my job with the Girl Scouts, I loved working with the Girl Scouts. And still to this day to tell people I was CEO of Penswood's Council, I am so proud that I did that. But when I lost the job, I was devastated. I, I you know, I, I joke that I sat around my pool all summer and drank a lot of margaritas because the gift was it happened during the summertime. So I got to do that. But again, initially, even that gift was, okay, where do I go next in my life, in my career, and what it is that I'm going to, that I'm going to do? And through all of those ups and downs that have happened for me, even over the last 12 years, it's it's really understanding that I enjoy helping other people succeed, helping them, giving them the tools so they can grow and be what it is that they want to be so they can grow and excel in, in, in their business. And be, being like your mother, helping other people and that gift will come back to you. So I, I, I so love that analogy that you used. So how are those moments... That moment of, uh, I guess, not of impact, but you had several moments. How has that changed your life to what you're doing today? Well, that I appreciate you asking because, um, you know, a couple of things came out of this. Number one, um, I realized that I had a different mission. That, you know, I worked for a, in corporate life for 31 years. You worked in corporate life, right? Yep. Loved it. Made a lot of money. Yeah. Loved it. Made a lot of money, right? And right. it has security. Right. But, you know. But when I was with Tony, when we were sitting actually in Chicago, when he, we had this talk and we were talking, because it's time for you to go out and do your own thing, because you'll never be free unless you do your own thing. You always be beholden to somebody else. Right. But how do you do it? Right. Because now I have fear of what if I fail? Right. Right. 
but okay, you know what? I'm really good at sales. I've been a top producer. So you know what? I can sell. Revenue solves a lot of problems. Right. Unfortunately, there's another side of the business too, which is called administration. Mm. And I wasn't very good at that. <laughs> so I, I ran into my, you talk about a business crash, a personal plane. My personal plane crash moment was I didn't do a very good job at accounts receivable. As a speaker, right? I'm out there you know, doing my, my thing, right? But collections, another part of this, and I wasn't very good at that, so I got way behind. Right. And so I had to figure it out because one of the things I've, I've learned is, you know, life's about strategies, right? There's a strategy for everything. You just got to find the person or the way to get the strategy done, and you can get anything accomplished. Right. So the way to do that is model people who've done it before. Right. Uh-huh. So I so I always was seeking out other people who've done what I did. Like you, if I had known you, I'd probably called you and say, Connie, you know, I've, I'm running this challenge. How do you deal with this? Right. So right. I seeked out people. But one of the things that I did, Connie, which changed everything, it's changing everything now for me. It's taking me a whole different direction. Is you know, I looked back and said, you know, when was I really successful? Mm-hmm. And I looked at, and when I was successful is when I had my first mentor, right. and I was going and investing in myself and personal development. Right. So this last summer, I went back to all these notes that I took, all the seminars that I took, all the tapes that I have. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's tapes, right? Um, and I've been investing myself, and all of a sudden, that good stuff's in my mind again, right? Yes. And now I'm mentoring people and sharing the strategies, right, right. That, that, that were given to me back when I was in the 20s and 30s. Right. So to answer your question, right, I mean, there's, you're going to go through stuff. No one goes through life unscathed. No. Everybody's going to have that personal plane crash moment, one or two of them. It's how you respond, right? And what do you right. do at that moment? And you, you did a challenge. You, you lost your job at the Girl Scouts. Yeah. So you, but it gave you a chance to reframe, what am I going to do with my life? Right. Instead of saying, poor, poor, pitiful for me. Right, right. And I heard somebody on Facebook recently, um, I forget exactly now how, how he put it, but it's, you know, in line with what we're talking about. He said he meets and runs into so many people that say, oh, I can't get a break. Oh, I can't get a break. And he said, you know, like, take that out of your vocabulary and just figure out what it is that worked or didn't work and, you know, and shift. And I always say pivot and yep. shift it and figure it out what it is that you need to do to change that and, and move forward. And like, for me, like this, this past year, we had to shift and pivot because we had such an intensity of people hitting our website for our community that our community cra- that the website crashed. Two Good weeks. problem to have. Yeah, right. Great problem. Right. Two, two weeks before we were having a conference here in LA. And so we had to postpone the event because, you know, I was going back to the team, like, you know, I'm like, what the hell's going on? Or why is this happening? Oh, um, so, you know, two weeks prior and people are, were emailing saying, you know, we can't register. And so, but yeah, we had over 728,000 hits to the site in 24 hours and it crashed. Wow. So yeah, great problem to have, but now, now you have to look at it differently. Right. Now you have to step, that foundation has now, I mean, scaled itself, you know, multiple times. So now you have to change how you're running the business. So every time you grow, you have to look at that ladder and say, okay, am I keeping up with where I want to be, where I want to go, and you know, making sure that you're serving your customers and clients at the same time. Quality and, problems. Quality yes. problems. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I know. But like, that's a great problem to have. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. So my summer was rebuilding. Uh, yeah. so we took the one website and it is now four separate websites. <laughs> yeah. Because I just, you know, I don't want to have that problem again. And then rather than having a shared account and platform, I invested and we have, I have my own platform now for that. So we, we have a lot more room to grow um, in that space. But yeah, great problem to have. But again, I looked at it and said, okay, how can we shift this? Even for our show, uh, you know, it now being the Connie Fife show, when we made that shift, you know, we make our mental shift we also attract other people around us. So we've That's attracted, right. you know, NPR and Sirius XM and CBS and, and they came knocking on my door and said, you know, you, you know, you guys are like moving and shaking over there. We, you know, we want you on board here as well. So all of these opportunities come, but you're, it's going to continually be that, you know, yep. 
those waves like you were hitting when you landed in the Hudson. It's never going to be smooth sailing. There's always going to be something. And, you know, right. it's, you know, I've, I've read the book, The Fourth Turning, and it basically helps you anticipate, right, where things mm -hmm. are going based on history. But it's like we were talking about, you know, your financial situation may be in the winter of your life, but now you may be in the fall of your relationship. So, you yeah. know, things are great here, but they suck over here. So, you know, I mean, yeah. so you just got to, you got to put your mindset. It's like, okay, it happens for a reason, a purpose. I got to deal with it, get the strategy, let's fix it. And then we'll move on to get it to the spring. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm going to, I'll have to agree with you that most entrepreneurs I know when it comes to the administration part are horrible. Yep. <laughs> Especially speakers. I found speakers. Especially I speakers. <laughs> I'm speaker. Guilty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, but then I made sure I built that team around me that right. will do that. And we even have them right. do that for our clients now because that's the thing they'll come and say, I hate marketing, I hate sales, and I hate administration. Okay, well, what do you like to do? <laughs> I want to talk. That's all I want to do is talk. Right? I, yeah, no, yeah. I, I get that. Just tell me where to go and I'll be there. Yeah. I'll show up. <laughs> Yeah. As long as you, your team could do everything else. And that was really prompted me of building out the bureau because it's more than just a bureau. We do those things for the speakers as well. Because again, I know when I started, there was no playbook in how you do right. this. And it was after, you know, again, like you said, getting yourself in the trouble, trying to catch up on yep. things saying, oh, I needed to do that. <laughs> I you mean I, I can collect money right now instead of waiting eight weeks? Wow. Wow, what a concept. Yeah, I, I I ran national organization and how did I not know that? Well, because I had other people that did that for me. That's right. <laughs> I was a sales guy. I sold, right? I did a good job of that. I'll bring the sale in, you deal with it. Right. And I, I was the fundraiser, so I was yeah. the, the face of the community. I was always out and asking for money, like sales. Yeah. Right. And I brought it in and I handed it over to and everybody else handled everything else else around me. Right. I, I remember starting to do this. Um, I, thought, I was like, all right, I could do this. And now we're talking 12 years ago. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do a mail merge letter and I'm going to send it out to everybody I know. And they just love me and they're all going to call. And I called my former assistant and I said, how do you mail merge? And she's yeah. like, let me pick myself up off the floor for her. <laughs> yeah. She's like, After I get done laughing, I'll sort of make you. Yeah, space. yeah. And then, yeah. of course, I send it out. And, you know, the other eye opener was nobody called. It's like, well, wait a minute. Why is anybody calling? So now your ego is like, okay, you know, we, we got to do this differently. So it's, it's really, really interesting. So I have a couple questions for you. Okay. All right. So what makes you unstoppable? Well, I think that what makes me unstoppable is I focus myself on personal development. So I'm always putting myself in the mindset that I can't be stopped. I mean, I just, I look at things as I, you used the word pivot. I used the word shift, right? The same thing. Right. So when I see a wall, I just go around it, right? Yep. I used to go through it. And sometimes yep. the, the wall is really thick. Yeah. But, you know, I, I figured out where, you know what? So, and, I, and this, I'll give you an example from the plane. This is about maybe give a more vivid example. There's one of the things I realized and when all this stuff was happening and as all stuff was breaking loose, all right, the term I used on TV many times is controlled chaos where, you know, no one's losing their heads, but man, things are happening quickly and you got to adjust quickly. Right. One thing that I realize is, is when you're in that kind of situation where all stuff's coming at you, maybe there's somebody else who has a better strategy than you do. And sometimes you have yeah. to check your ego at the door, let them take the leadership role. Right. And that's what happened on the plane a lot. I mean, there's some times where I, I was doing some things and I thought I was pretty good, right? I knew my stuff. Right. But there were, some, there were a couple of things that can't leave other people do how to do better. So, so that's what I use in my business likewise. I, I, I get the better team around me, but I'll find somebody who's done, who knows how to do the job better than I do, and I'll leverage them, whether I outsource to them or leverage them which makes me unstoppable because one of the questions I ask people when I do my workshops, Connie, is do you want to be in charge? Or do you want to be in control? Like and that. people, and people just sort of get, they don't know what to do. Right. They yeah, want to be in control. Minute, right. Both. Yeah. I want to, but you can't do both. Right. Right. See, I, can, I can control everything, but if you're in control, it's controlling you. But yes. if you're in charge, right, you don't have any control, but you're leveraging. So what do you want to be in charge? Do you want to be in control? All of a sudden I get people's inside people's heads. Because my first mentor, Bill, asked me that question back in 1986 when he, he took me on. 
you know, I, I thought, you know, when you're 24, 25, you think you're unstoppable anyway, right? You're yeah. Superman. Right. You're bulletproof. Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, you know nothing. You figure out, you, you were somebody who's 60 years old who owns 80 movie theaters or multi-millionaire, yeah. and you know nothing. Right. So when he looks at you, that, and he took me under his wing and asked me these kinds of questions, it opened my mind. Where, yeah. You know what? I, I was so all about control back then, but he really said, you want to be in a leadership role, you got to be in charge. You got to step back and let other people do Correct them if they need help. Right. So that's the answer to the question I give. It's like, you know, yeah. sometimes to be unstoppable, you've got to check your ego at the door and let somebody else who knows yeah. how to do it get it done. Yeah. And, and, and again, that was something that, that I had to learn learn as well because mine was, well, I was a CEO. I was director of organizations. Like, you know, what's what's going on? It was my coach. I mean, and, and having a really good coach around you is is priceless. It really is. My coach, right. I remember him saying um, something to me when I went to him, and this was all this was happening, and nobody was responding to my merge mail merging. <laughs> and and you uh, shot, right? Right. Yeah. And I'm like, but what's going on? And I remember him saying to me, "Are you all in this game, or do you just have a toe in the water? When you figure that out, he goes, come back to me, and then we could work together." So, and and I and I always remember that. And again, going back to being in control, I, I had to let my control go. I had to, I had to let that, let that go, and say, you know, I'm, I'm all in this game, and I'm willing to do what it takes you know, to, to make it happen. Burn the boats, right? You got, you got to burn the boats. That's right. That's right. And he was in Nashville. I was still in Pennsylvania at the time. I remember calling him up and saying, "I need to speak with you. I'll be there tomorrow," and drove from Pennsylvania to Nashville so I can have an hour long conversation yep. with them. <laughs> That's called commitment and resolve, right? Right. Which, which is different than I want to do this. Or right. I ought to it's do different. And this was, different. this was commitment. I'm committed. Yep. I'm coming to see you. Yep. And he was like, Oh, I'm like, I'm jumping in my car now. I'll be there tomorrow. I'll and be there I'm, 12 hours. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. And I, so yeah, you know the route I took yep. all the way down to exactly. line. Yeah. 81 cut over. Yep. And I, and I cut over and I showed up and had that meeting with them. I actually, I think the meeting was over in five minutes and then the rest of it was just, you know, catching up. Yep. Uh, but yeah, um, that was my resolve. That was my commitment to make, to make this yep. time just like you. So what is, what is your process for evaluating opportunities? Well, number one, yeah, that's a great question because you know, I used to evaluate them a whole different way. Now I evaluate them, does it, does it meet my value set? Does it, and it work in my mission? Where before it was all about profit driven and yes, right. we all need money. Right. But I got to, I'm to the point in my life now where it's about legacy and looking at, here's my mission, does it fit into my mission? Mm -hmm. And then if it fits into my mission, does it fit into my value set? Okay. And I've had situations lately where, you know, yes, it fits into my mission, I wanna, you know, that impact the people and do this and that, but you know, I have to check my some of my values at the door to get it done. And I'm not I'm to the point now I don't need to do that. I should yeah. have done it back then, which right. I did. I did. I, I'm not I'm not a saint. I did. But now if it doesn't fit those two criteria, that's how I make how I make my decisions on what I want to get involved with. And who so I'm what is get your, so what is your mission? Uh, my mission is to be happy, realize I accomplish anything I desire and have faith in my creator, inspiring others to be the same. That's my mission. Love and that. I wrote that in 1994. And, and I tell people, you know, I, I, I paid $4,000 to go do this thing, right? <laughs> but that's when Stephen Covey was coming out with all this stuff. And it was new stuff, right? Right, Stephen right. Stephen Covey was the man, right? It's like, that's whoa. Right. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you come home and you're not doing it and you're a loser. And you're telling your wife you spent 4000 bucks, And it's like, what? Right? Yeah. But I tell people, God's delays are not God's denials, because that happened on, Jan on January 15, 2000. That, that mission came true. Because all of a sudden now I'm impacting people. Right. I'm happy. I, I'm living to my creator's values. To me. Right. So God's delays are not God's denials. Maybe you're not ready for it yet. That's, I wasn't emotionally and physically and mentally ready for that yet. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but it took me 15 years to figure it out. And now yeah. I can I, do it. I, I think day. me, me, well, me, like I said, that really, I would say 10 years. Yep. And it really, I think it took mom even being sick. And that was really an eye opener for me because I didn't grow up with my mom. And so I really got to know her. And that's why I chose to live by my mission, which is mm -hmm. to serve God first and keep the passion of life activated. 
and it's a little bit, you know, more than that. But I, I chose to take that step back and say, you know, the business will be there when I'm done. Um, I, I need to spend time with her. It was more important to do that. And I would not have changed that for the world. Yep. Okay, we get choked up over that. So, but but I still hear her. I still hear her in my head. Certainly, you will. So do, yeah, you do. You just do. Um, yep. You just do. So I know that you have um, a giveaway for folks if they text seven nine seven nine seven nine, and then they put in brace for impact. Number four impact, correct? Right, brace number four impact. If that is that case sensitive at all, or just brace number four impact? The, the number you have to have the number four in there, not F O U R. Number four. Okay, number four. Okay, right. and they're going to receive your first video from your new series of overcoming adversity in challenging in challenging times. That's correct, and you know, I, I, I. What was happening has probably happened to you too, because you've been doing this a little bit longer than I have. Is you having people call you all the time. They want you on stage sometime and you know, you want to do this. You want to serve everybody you can, but yes. there's only so much time. Right. So I, I, I was able to really get defined on what my mission was by a conversation that I had with my uh, former assistant. Now it came out of a discussion after I, I talk about, uh, I helped my neighbors down the street. I had two elderly neighbors and when I'm sitting, where you see me sitting right now, my wife called me and said they need help getting their TV on. I'm pretty good getting TVs on, right? Okay. And they're your neighbors. You go do anything you can. And they're older, like 80s, right? So you go do, right. I go down there and fix your TV. And they say, can you stay for milk and cookies? I said, I love milk and cookies. You don't look, right? Especially a couple, a couple older ladies, you could probably bake, right? right. Probably good bakers. Uh -huh. So I'm sitting there waiting, but I'm, I'm looking and I'm sitting there in the coffee table flipping through the books. And all of a sudden, I'm seeing pictures of concentration camps. Ooh. And I'm like, I love World War II history. I mean, yeah. I'm all in. I love to read about. So they came out and said, hey, where did you get this stuff? This is great. They said, well, we were there. They showed me the inside of their arm with the numbers on their arms. Oh. They were there. Wow. So I said, tell me your story. Let me record your story. I mean, they're in their 80s. They're probably not going to be around too much longer. They said, they would not let me record it, but they told me the story. Okay. About being in the concentration, surviving and thriving. So I told my assistant this. She goes, what you need to do is you need to put this in audio, at least audio format for your grandkids and great grandkids so they can hear from your voice what happened that day from your perspective. Right. So we did that. So all of a sudden we found out there's like 12 principles that you know, I, I, that basically I talked about through this whole thing. And one of them is overcoming adversity. So I did a video for my series. It's called Cultivating Personal Leadership. And one of the first videos I did is overcoming adversity and challenging times because everybody faces their personal plane crash, Connie. You've had it. I've had, everybody's got it. Yes. So I, I want to give this to folks. They, they text that number. They'll get this free video. So, and I just say, just watch it. But more importantly, give it to a younger person. Because a lot of these kids these days, especially millennials and Gen X and Gen Yers, they don't go, haven't gone through some of this stuff. You know, they, and they all of a sudden get hit with something and they don't know how to handle it. So it's just a 12 minute video. I would just love for you to pass it on. That's my gift to you for okay. checking in with Connie today. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll be sure that we, we get it out there. We promote it. We let people know that it's available to them. So, and then a listener can find you at davesandersonspeaks.com. That's correct. That's my website. And we're always popular with new information and things. And, and uh, so that's the best way to contact me if you have any interest. And yeah, you know, what we're doing right now, Connie, is once again, we just talked about how to, you know, people want to get access, but mm -hmm. it's so hard. So I've made a commitment. I want to be able to, what we talked about is leverage. I want to leverage my mentors. I mean, you've had a lot of mentors. I've had mm -hmm. some tremendous mentors and some of the people I've talked about today. So I've started this group impact the Canley. I'm going to take a select group, about a hundred people and only give them this specialized content that I've learned from my mentors, but give them access to my mentors. Oh, people, okay. people like, people like a Dominique Wilkins, who's been a, who's a hall of fame basketball player who I, I, I'm in business with. What does it take to be a hall of famer? What's the mindset? Right. You have an opportunity to talk to a Hall of Famer. You have a chance to talk to a guy who just sold a business for $300 million you want to do business with. Right. What's that mindset? So one of my goals in this impact group, and you go up and look, check this out on my website, is not only do you get great new content, and exclusive content, but you get to meet my mentors. Um, one of the gentlemen who, uh, who works with Dave Ramsey, who's, who's, who's an amazing entrepreneur. What does it take to work with a guy named Dave Ramsey and be a part of that world? 
financial mindset. So, uh, um, well, yeah, Dave Ramsey is definitely good. And Dave Ramsey is, is very close associates with my coach. So that's being in Nashville. I'm sure he is. Right. So that's right. So that's how I know that Michael, yeah. Hyatt, Dan Miller. So Dan, Dan Miller is a central person to one of my mentors who, who's going to be on my, on our, on our show on Thursday. Dan well, he's my, he's been my mentor, the one that I've been talking about. Well, tell him Aaron Walker said hi, okay? Because <laughs> Aaron Walker and he are going, we're going to be on this on this show on Thursday together. Oh, okay, okay. Not that. Well, November fifteenth, whatever November fifteenth. Okay, is. coming up, coming up. Okay, yes. okay. Oh, well, yeah, super. How about cool. that? What a small world. It is a small world. So yeah, it's Dan. Um, and um, I mean, I th I thank Dan and congratulate him and just just for everything and again just for being my mentor and just you know just for being there. I could pick up the phone, call him. So. Uh, I think it's been what, 10 years now and I'm, you know, I'm on one of his coaches through the 48 day, you know, days group as well. So um, I'm thinking about going on his cruise next spring. So you might see me there. So well, well, you, might, you might see me there. I mean, it's a, this is a small world because these mentors are getting up in age, as you know, right, Connie? That's right. They, they got to leave it to us now to take the ball and run with it. So it's uh, our obligation yeah. to do that. Yeah. And I, I know that that's, you know, where these guys are at too. But yeah, those, yeah. the three of them, him, Michael Hyatt and Dave Ramsey. So yeah, I've got to meet each of them and get to know each yeah. of them personally. So. so that's what I'm doing with Impact and getting some of these people we're talking about, you have access, personal access, access to. So if you're interested, you can check that on the website too. I'd be love to have you as part of this group. Oh, cool, cool. Well, I want to thank you for being here. I mean, we could just continue uh, yeah. just, just ch chatting away here. Um, so much information and you are giving so much back to people and just it, it's truly remarkable when we're able to share our experiences and that was the one thing that I learned because again as an executive you you know you you learn to be this tough person you know you're sitting in you know this the CEO seat or at least that's how people uh, perceive you you know right. as as being and, and I come to realize that, no, you really need to be connected with people. You yep. really need to really be putting your heart out there and connect with people. And when they connect with you, it, it's just, it all comes back to you. And, yep. you know, that's, again, that's what was one of my major learnings over the last 12 years is to really love myself and put myself out there. Well, you're doing a great job, and I really appreciate you having me on your show today. Well, thank you. Thank you. And, and, and again, for everybody listening, and, and I, mean, I, I do say it all the time, and this is what I enjoy doing the most, giving our listeners, giving our members those tools or resources so you can live your dream. So hang in there, because we will continue moving our ideas forward and keeping the passion of life activated. We have feature advertising available, so check it out on our website at activatemypower.com. And soon, it's still a bit under construction, the Connie5show.com. We're just moving everything over there, so it's simple and easy for you to find. The Five Group is ridiculously dedicated to inspiring individuals just like you to activate your power, live your dream as a lifestyle entrepreneur. So what does your lifestyle business look like? Now, you're listening to The Connie Five Show. If you like what you're hearing, like and share us with your friends and colleagues, and be sure to just subscribe on iTunes. Until next time, activate your power. Always end your day with a positive thought. No matter how hard things were throughout your day, tomorrow's a fresh new opportunity to be better, be stronger, and be unstoppable together. See you next time. Bye-bye.